Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Russian Panda and this is my low poly turret time lapse. Now I'm going to show you the stages of designing an actual asset for your game. So um, currently designing a new futuristic um, century turret. I don't want like a modern day shooter turret like you'd see in Modern Warfare 3 and Modern Warfare 2. That or, or any modern shooter really. You know something that's a bit bulky, tripedal and that. And this is the type of century turret I'm designing right now. That one right there on the screen that's the one i don't want to design so the way i'm going for as you can see is this uh, more bipedal standing upright uh type of design with a pyramidal pyramidal shape is that right yeah primedal shape probably if that's the right way uh saying it but anyway that a triangular shaped uh smooth shape design rather than the big bulky design that you see in modern shooters uh, for century turrets with um, one barrel, whereas the, in the central you have three similar to a minigun of sorts. Now, as you can see, I'm just currently designing the uh, <laughs> like a robot kind of turret, but I was like, I don't want. I'm going against that. Uh, so I went for more of a uh, you know spider legs type of deal, so like the possible movement that. But I went against this in the end anyway, because I was like, look, it might just be a bit stupid being that. So it just needs to stand up, in my opinion. It needs to be upright. And standing, but without that, the create issues. Now, while designing this, I didn't think about the 360 degree look of what a sentry gun has usually. But no, I have it so it only looks up and down, so 180 degree view, which is kind of pathetic when you think about it. It's like, damn, that's a really weak sentry turret. But it packs a punch because um, because of that one barrel, it's like a pulse rifle. As it is energy based and because you know, it's futuristic so it doesn't have have to rely on this massive rail of bullets that come off the side of it like we see with other sentry turrets so i wanted you know the more futuristic design as i've stated but as you can see my drawing isn't the greatest so this is what i would call a working drawing which you see in um, design and technology where you just design design a basic drawing and then someone else can contact it in the future so that is the content art finished now Finita. So the next stage, the 3D modeling. Now I'm just going to talk you through the process of my first little bit, and then I'm going to lead you through to music, and I'll join back with the rewrapping and talk about that some more. But during this process, I designed the body. You know, uh, beveling the edges to make it look smoother, make it look a bit more futuristic rather than modern. I wanted to go with the barrels be triangular rather than circular, which is what I did in the concept. So I went against the concept, as it's only there as a template of what. I drew not what the actual thing should be as you can see here, i wanted to bring out the legs a bit more uh, i went against that i was like no this should just be holders like things that can bolt on the legs which i you know i went for i went for a more smoother legs which i think worked really well at the end of the day i think it looks really good so i'll leave you the rest of the 3d modeling and i'll join back when we go to ub wrapping Hello, I'm back. Uh, as I said, but as we're coming towards the end of the 3D modeling section of the video, as you can see, I added things to the design. Like this is here right now. What I'm designing is a lens. Now, with this, this is meant to track the playing game. So, like you know, oh, you know, it's spider when the lens spots you. But I'll figure. I'll show you how I figured that out in shortly because I do design a laser pointer, which I think is really brings this design together like there's not just a turret there's actually stuff onto it to make it more interesting to make it look a bit more unique compared to what other turrets usually do and as you can see the hold i think like this use of like making it look built rather than oh yeah it's just this like futuristic weapon that it was just made by this ultra power above but no it's like made by militants from the future like oh they still use wires still use holds and that to make it look a bit more <laughs> like a gorilla essentially and as you can see right here this is the laser pointer 
So once the, you know, the lens captures the player, the laser pointer will point at the player so the bullets can follow the laser accurately. More as like a visual representation in game actually, so the player like, knows oh, I'm being tracked, I need to avoid this area if they shoot at them. Um, <coughs> so as you can see, like, you know, I'm just copying and pasting over the, um, the, you know, the bolts that will hold the gun together, adding a bit of a bat bit to it. Now the wires I did manually and that was a pain because it, there, there is a modifier on a Blender which is free called Cable Lighter, which basically makes free cables for you but I went manually because I don't have that modifier on my PC. So I built it manually. Which I think add more to like the feel to the thing. So it's like oh yeah you've made this, it's more random. And I think it just adds to the overall look. Now here I messed up with the tube somehow that I can't remember what why that happened. I don't know why that happened. But like this is the um but this is the battery power, this is where the energy source is from. So that bottom is the actual battery pack, which I don't do a good job in expressing that's different from the rest, but that's something I can tackle in the future. Now onto the UV wrapping. This part of any 3D model, no matter how simple or how complex, is a pain in the arse. What do I mean by this? It what, what I meant, what I said, it's just a pain. It's literally the most frustrating part of 3D modeling. Because you have to basically illustrate the 3D image in 2D so you can add textures to it later. So you can texture paint onto it. But if you UV poorly, like I am doing right here, that this is no way to UV wrap, by the way. This is a bad example. Don't follow this example. But if you re wrap poorly, the texture afterwards is going to be poor and look awful in game. But thankfully at the moment, I'm not worrying about that because I'm not actually going to be in game with this. This is more of a render, quote unquote. This is more of a, oh yeah, showcase of what I can do and it's potentially added to a game later on. But no, this part is oh, an absolute pain. Ideally, you want to get the most important parts as big as possible, which is why you can see like the, the holds are bigger than every other piece in the UV wrap. Oh, sorry, UV map. But yeah, eventually I'll end up minimising everything and just filling up that little square in the middle, which is where you put the textures in. Where you can either hand paint it or use a third party um, software like Adobe, um, what's it called now, Substance Painter? Which is really good, the best one, but it's expensive, which is why I don't, I prefer to hand wrap it in Blender, using in-house tools in Blender. But that's limited, so that's why you should use a third party like um, Bridge, for instance, which isn't great. It's more for realistic, you know, illustrations and things when you 3D model, not low poly. So if you like stylized models like this one right here, then you'll probably want to use Substance Painter because you can hand paint or you can just use um, whack on a face mask and just whack on textures that you want to use. Very simple, just expensive, so it's not worth the money in my opinion because it's not a one-time payment. Now I'm coming to the end of the UV wrap section as you can see. It's a, uh, <laughs> it's a mess. Like this is not a good UV, but just, like I said, it doesn't matter. This is just so if I add it to Unreal later or Unity, I can add a texture. So it's, you know, it follows those texture patterns. So they go into the place where it needs to go. But now we're coming, we should be coming up to shortly the uh, end of this UV section. As you can see, I'm now going to the coloring. So I'm just doing block coloring, coloring so you know what's what. And I went for blue and grey um, because I feel like it's just like bright and dark colours so you can tell what's what. Red wires so they're easy to see, visible to see and just unique for the player and brain bits for where the wood should be. I think I changed the blue to a grey colour, I'm pretty sure. Oh, no, like, like a cream colour which I think looks decent, looks futuristic. And now we're going to the um, interesting part of the video, animating. Now if you have any experience in animating 2D, 3D, Hell, if you have the possibility, 4D, <laughs> it's a joke. Um, if you can animate, you understand the issues you have when animating. This is a long process that I managed to do in 15 minutes because it's a simple prototype. It's just a simple object that you can see. Um, I'll make the animations. Uh, there's shooting, uh, the opening of it, so when you place it down, being hit, being destroyed, looking up, looking down. Those are just simple animations that are not hard to create when you make a model like this. Now, would I recommend doing it the way I did it? For objects like this, like guns that are low poly, yes. But for hands and like human body parts and stuff that's a little bit more complex, no, I don't recommend doing this at all. Because this is like, you have to work on white painting and stuff like that. 
for rigging because rigging is the long process of it all but here we go here's the animations i might just leave uh, actually i'll come back at the end of the animations and explain them and how i did those uh, but right now i'll just leave the music again and see you shortly Right, we are coming to the end of this very long process of animating. As you saw, you can see me doing the process of animating, which is what you do when you animate any body part. It's just, you go through the process of going for each bit, adding to a timeline, changing it slightly, um, changing it slightly, adding to the timeline. Sorry, I have hay fever at the moment, so my nose is completely blocked. That's why my voice is behaving, I'm talking a bit louder than usual, so I am sorry about that. Um, but if you have made it this final video, do drop a like and do subscribe because I will be making future content and future um, dev vlogs which because I'm making a, um, an indie game at the moment, uh, so I haven't had the time to work on that at the moment, so yeah. I am making a, a little indie game. But here we go, the animating. Right, this is the first animation, which is the opening. So when you play this down, it will place animation on the legs will pop out and so will the turret. Which I think is cool because it has this like idea of, oh yeah, this is magic. This is the next animation, the looking up. As you can see, the scaling is a bit off because blender and white painting, like I said, long process that I just managed to do in 15 minutes. It's not hard, it's just when you want it to look good, it's a bit longer than usual. The next animation, looking down. As you can see, it's very simple, very easy to follow. And the very next animation should be the shooting animation, which I'll explain at length. I'll say at length. I'll explain in a simple way and the way it's so like slow kind of. This is meant to be a powerful shot kind of, and with send effects and like actual effects, you can see it will look better and look more powerful. But right now, this is a simple shooting animation, which I think is really cool because the body goes back like recoil kind of, which I find amazing. And I think I did a really good job there doing that. That's the only bit of animation that's decent, in my opinion. The rest of it's all like um, junk. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's a really cool animation, personally. Like, that's the animation I spent the most time on. And this is being hit. What I did for this was basically just um, increase the scale of the root bone of the body. So it looks like it's just being hit. And now the next one, um, after this shortly, is being destroyed, which I didn't know how to do correctly so i just basically exploded the whole image and increased the scale of the body to make it look like oh yeah it's been hit so it's exploded and of course the visual effects and that you'll see they explode static or whatever and it'll delete the asset it'll delete the um, objects in game be you know being easy to follow so that's pretty much everything for the uh, time lapse now um if you did enjoy do drop a like uh, do drop a subscribe Follow the channel for future content, um, but I'll be seeing you soon, so uh, in case I don't see you soon now, however, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. See you later.